So in the books, they have stuff about what happened, but I know those two things are not necessarily connected at all. So what can you hence tell? Give us something about since you said. <laughs> No, I, d I also then added it wasn't my turn to watch him. Yeah. So I did it wasn't I wasn't <laughs> I, I I turned around. No. Um I you know the thing about Star Trek is there's so many possibilities for story. And um, you know, it's funny, every other show we've ever worked on, you look at the beginning of the season and you think, oh, we have to fill 20, 22 hours. Oh, we have to come up with 13 hours. We have to come up with 15 hours. I don't feel that way on this show because there's so much story to be told. There's so many possibilities. So um, I would say that probably in season two so far, discussions of that particular thing has not come up but that doesn't mean it won't come up still yet and it won't come up in the future I think our characters have are having a little bit of a Lorca hangover um, you know they were lied to they were manipulated and he was brilliant at it um, and I think that they they've got to get him out of their system for a little bit but you know, that is the beauty of it. You never say never. And people pop up on our show in the most yeah. unexpected of times. I don't think I want to yeah. So season one had this, like, overarching Klingon arc, kind of character development arc, right, with Burnham. Are you going to do some, another overarching long arc in season two? Are we going to see uh, focusing more on Burnham again? Or is it going to switch to another character? We have, I mean, our ensemble is fantastic. And what's terrific about our cast is that any any single one of them can carry, you know, his or her own story in that way. So we can, you know, they can carry the, all of that water. For us, what's interesting, so last season was war uh, and finding a way to peace. And this season, one of the things that we're actually very interested in tackling is, um, for lack of a better word, sort of spirituality in Star Trek. Um, what is the role of serendipity versus science? Um, you know, is there a story about faith to be told? Um, leaps of faith. I mean, we're dealing with space. We're dealing with things that can't be explained. And you have a character like Michael Burnham who believes that there is an explanation for everything. So one of the things that we're very interested in is, is tackling that idea as it sort of rolls out. And it doesn't just mean religion. It, it means, it means um, patterns in our lives. It means connections that you just can't explain. It's about who enters your life and who leaves your life and sort of these, these indelible impressions that people make and, and sort of the journey that you take and, and you don't realize that, that along the way um, you gather things up that you need and whoever could have, whoever could have expected that. So that's one of our biggest uh, ideas right now and it's threading through all of our characters' lives. And I mean, certainly in a world that has godlike beings, I think Star Trek would focus on that, but it definitely just seemed to be kind of a blind spot so far. Yeah, it has. I mean, I think that that was something that, you know, we, we, we found as an area that you could sort of talk about. And it's, it's interesting now, I mean, we, we, we've talked about, you know, the Federation is an amazing organization and, and, and how they've managed to how everybody's managed to come together and put aside differences, but that is one area that we just felt like hadn't necessarily been explored. And we also find for the show, when we get good debates just in the writer's room, or we get good debates just walking through uh, by casting in, in, into the kitchen, when we're talking about it in a certain way, it tends to then many times lean into really interesting storytelling for the show. So what we love to present is always many different points of view. Um, we're never wanting to say this is the one way things have to be at all times. We want to make sure that people are one of the joys, one of the things about the Federation and about Starfleet is just the, the so many different points of view are represented, and that's what we're going to continue to do this year on the show. I have a specific question from someone online. We wanted to know, um, Sarek in the episode said that the bombing of the learning center was what changed Michael Burnham's destiny versus when her parents died. What does that mean? Hmm. Well, you know, I think that those are all seminal moments for sure in her in her own timeline. We're going to discover um, this season a little bit more about 
what happened um, after the learning center bombing, and and um, there are some there are some pretty big things that, that Michael took away from that. And um, there are some things we're going to uncover um, that, that sort of talk about not only what happened then, but what some of the ramifications are from that horrible terrorist event that, you know, was, that was waged on this innocent child. And we'll see how, how uh, we'll see the ripple effects of that. We'll talk about it. Uh, I asked a question to Glenn, and he said it would be a better question for you guys. Oh, Glenn. Uh, it was about Ariel. I had asked oh. her about her augments, and why does she have them, and does she have any special abilities? Mm. Oh, um, well, her special ability is everybody loves Ariel. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Like, everybody loves Ariel. And she's fascinating, but as far as I, I think, you know, we, we haven't established necessarily that she has any kind of special special abilities outside of how everybody brings her special thing to the party, especially in the bridge crew, but um, her, she is a character, also, it's interesting because um, all these people that you're bringing up, she is a character we will learn a little bit more about this year, and, and it is because that people, she sort of captured everybody's imagination, so I don't want to give too much of it away, but um, uh, you will learn a little bit more about Arian this year. We love our bridge crew. They are amazing. We love them. I mean, again, like, what are the chances that you find these actors who come in and, and, and they do such an incredible job and they're such incredible people and they've just got such a spirit that draws the audience in? I mean, one of the things that we hear a lot is, tell us more about them. You know, who are they? Fill it out a little bit more. And, and we have an opportunity to do that this year. And, and Ariam is part of the bridge crew. And um, we have a lot of thoughts on, on who she was and, and, and what the augments are all about. And we'll, we'll yeah. dig into it. We gave them to her. Yeah. 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 That will, yeah. Yes. What is we'll that about? Right? Yeah. No, right. we're going to go into that. Yeah. It, yes. And Detmer, too. Like, that's yes. like Very much so, yeah. That was after yeah. the Battle that was of the Stars, right? That was after yeah. she was injured, yeah, in yes. battle. And, um, I, you know, keep it... Keep, kind of suddenly. Yeah, like, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the eyepiece. Yeah. <laughs> and, and was it always part of the design to kind of slowly get to the bridge crew? Because you know, get to that point where they're finally a team in yeah. Yeah. episode it, 10 or so. Or yeah. 10 I think, 13. but you nailed it. I mean, you can't, on a show like this, and where teamwork is so important, they can't can't be these sort of just human props for a lack of it. They they are part of the DNA of how that ship works and how the show works. And so I think we always had the desire to make sure that we got to know them. Um, I think for us it was so exciting that the audience wanted to know too more about them. So um, you know it was going to all be in due time, but it seems like it's all happening at the at the right time. Yeah, there's always there's only so much you can sort of do with with an ensemble cast in terms of um, how you divvy up your time, how how you allocate time to different characters. And this year we really you know because we didn't meet the Discovery crew really until episode, episode three. Yeah. So already we were sort of limited in, in 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 the amount of time that we could really create, you know, five or six characters that the audience would bond with and, and love. Um, but now that people know who they are and have accepted them as, as our crew. And we're curious. Yeah, right. So now 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 you have the space to start pulling pulling more people into things and you know we're not we're not we're not at war anymore and it's our hope that we're going to be doing more away missions and and a lot more um actual exploration and those people are on the bridge for a reason they all have special skills and and we, you know we'll start learning more about them are you still going to start filming mid-april yes we will start filming in about a month yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> just have a, you need a passport? Get your passports ready. Okay, so, so in season one, obviously, like, you had a limited amount of time and you had a very ambitious outline. You guys tried to do a lot. What things worked the way that you had planned and what things maybe you wish went differently or you could have focused more? I feel almost 
yes. stunned that <laughs> things went as well as they did. And that is only because I didn't, I, we knew who our team was when we all started. We all jumped in together, but we didn't know them because we hadn't gone through the process together yet. So you know how like it's the, it's the journey that sort of really builds the relationships. Um, I've never met a group of people who are more about throwing in 110% than our crew, our cast, our, our writers, everybody. It, people loved this show and wanted to make sure it saw the light of day. They were so proud of it that, um, and I think in the moment, we, I at least can speak for me, I was just like day by day, it's trying to survive, just trying to remember, like, okay, this came from here. There's so much to track, so much to figure out. There's so much, and um, it didn't give a lot of opportunity to sort of look up and look around. And then by the time we got to the end of the year, and then quickly after that, no, I actually we aired before we were done shooting, right? It's a blur. Um, when you finally looked up, it was you're really able to like, oh my gosh, look what we did. It was very exciting, and and I did we did a lot, and I don't even think we again. It was the first time. We We'd done a show like this as far as the history and the canon and, and the expectation and and you just have to focus on what's right in front of you and so in a lot of ways season two for me is different because we have the knowledge that we don't have before of what people thought or 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 it's real in the world before it was something like we knew about and no one else knew about it yet so um, there, there was a this first season it was a blessing that we were almost done before it started airing because though the feedback is great to get from the audience, it can paralyze you in, in ways. And there was, for us to survive this, there had to just be this singularity of purpose that, I mean, everybody locked arms, crew, cast, everybody. And we just were like, okay, this is our vision and this is what we're doing. Um, and I think that that enabled us without what, being able to do that in a vacuum was actually really, really good. Yeah. Now it's out in the world, and I and I really can't believe. I mean, how rare is it to have a cast that's they all get along, they embrace their characters, they are they're so they're so people just embrace them. They just clicked, I and mean, you never get that in an ensemble out of the gate. I mean, you're always sort of adjusting and moving and changing, but they they. They were incredible, and this crew that just stepped up and found ways to pull this off. I mean, when we got to the Mirror Universe, I mean, that required a complete world creation. And at that point in a series, you know, you're, you are, you spend a lot of money, and you and people are tired, and yet this 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 our our designers and our crew just came back with a with a version of the Terran Empire that just blew us away. And and so we we. It's a miracle. It's kind of a miracle that it happened. And and again, you know, when we talk about season two, we're going to be analyzing that whole idea of, of miracles. You know, that was what it was this season. Um, having it air and having people talk about what they liked and didn't like. One of the things I'm excited to hear is that the fans are open to more scenes where things have stopped down, stop down scenes, where characters are checking in, where we're learning more about stuff, where the plot isn't necessarily driving the whole mm. thing, you know, and, and that was one of those things where I'm, I'm proud of all of the turns, but I'm glad to know that people are interested in maybe quieter moments, mm -hmm. maybe just oh, moments yes. that mix feel, it mix yeah. it up, have more of a slice of life flavor. They want to you know? take you away, but can you tell us how many episodes yeah. season two? Yeah. I don't know, I'm going to look Do you have here. a target date? Yeah. We're doing 13. Okay. Okay. 13. Doing 13. 13. Yeah. And tar do you have a target date for premiere? We don't have we a don't. target date yet. No? We don't. <laughs> Yeah. When they we, tell we us next week, so well done. Yeah, right? I, know. I wish. I really do wish. Yes. Thank you so much. And, and, and you guys for the disco shirts. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 No, 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 just just that they oh, yeah. exist at all. That, 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 that like, is a oh, God, disco shirt. I yeah. keep telling people I'm good at it's disco Sunday and they're like, what are you talking about? I love that Thank by the you. way. All of that yeah. stuff, it just makes me like grin from ear to ear when I hear people say it's disco Sunday. It's I love like, it. 